Hey guys, James here with Waterford Business Solutions, back again to continue our discussion ramping up for 2021 tax season and tax planning starting in Q3. We are now three weeks into September, meaning we're even closer to October, which is key tax planning time for really everyone making sure that we have all those plans in place. So we have this series going on to help you understand how you would file, things to look out for, what you want to do to make sure that you are getting the best bang for your buck and or understanding how you fit in. This week we're going to continue on kind of our corporation area and talk about C corporations. The last two weeks we've talked about S corporations, S corp elections, what that takes. This week we're going to talk about a standard C corporation. And a standard C corporation is basically what most everyone, most of us are going to think about when we hear corporation. Walmart, Belk, Dillard's, any of these huge national chains, almost anything, basically everything, that is publicly traded on the stock market because those will have more than the maximum of 100 shareholders that an S corporation is limited to. So when we think of a corporation, a C corporation is what most of us think about. Now I personally don't work with a ton of C corporations or 1120, that's the form that we file for a C corporation, filers due to the fact of their size and I work more with small business owners. Most small business owners are going to be a sole proprietor, an LLC, a partnership, and thus they're going to be filing forms there or an S corporation because they are a smaller business. I do have a few C corporations that I work with, but most of them over a longer period of time, we do choose to use that S corp election that we've been talking about to reduce their tax burden due to benefits that it allows. Again, as I mentioned two weeks ago with the S Corp election on a C Corp, please, please, please make sure you understand how those dividends are going to transition over and how that's going to affect you as an S Corp when you file before you make that decision. And it's so important to talk with a tax professional there to understand what is going on. So really getting into a C Corporation. Um, or an 1120 filing, what do we need to consider? Well, an 1120 filing, there's going to be multiple shareholders. There's going to be multiple people there, all that will be potentially receiving dividends or receiving payments. Now, unlike a S corporation, you do not have to pay a reasonable salary. Um, even if you are actively involved in the business, that requirement does not exist. So that is a benefit there. But the biggest detriment to a C corporation comes in two places. First and foremost is a term that most people have probably heard um, but may not understand, which is double taxation. What double taxation means is for a C corporation, C corporations are always taxed as a corporation. So if the corporation makes a profit, they have a net income, the corporation pays that money back and pays the taxes there. They are not a pass-through entity. Whereas S corporations, most of these other ones that we're going to talk about are pass-through entities. So since the corporation gets taxed, they get a tax burden on whatever, and then the tax will also go through on the dividends that any shareholders take out. Dividends don't reduce the net income for a business. Uh, wages do, so if you are an owner and you take a wage, that will help reduce the net income for the business. But dividends, draws, disbursements, whatever you wanna call it there, those don't reduce the net income. So. The company can disperse $50,000 in dividends or distributions. They will be taxed at the corporate tax rate, which for, as of this recording, which is September, um, is 21%. They will be taxed 21% on that 50,000, and then the shareholders that receive those distributions or dividends, so let's say that one shareholder receives that entire 50,000 dividend, 
that shareholder will also be taxed on that $50,000 on their personal income tax rate. So obviously that depends on how much money you brought in, everything like that, as to what income tax bracket you fall into. But for simplicity's sake, for someone who would kind of be in the middle of everything, not a high earner, but not really a low earner either, and saying that we stick for the 2021 tax season at that 21%, we'd be looking at that dividend being taxed twice at a total of 43% on both ends. So that is the biggest drawback to anything. The other thing is dividends that are non-cash have to be taken at market value. So let's say instead of taking cash, instead of taking monetary disbursements from the company, you take property disbursements. Whether that be equipment or materials or something like that, or whether that be physical property, you cannot take that property at $100,000 if it is worth $500,000. You have to take that property at its market value, whether it's physical property or whether it's actual materials. So something very important to remember is you have no flexibility in how you claim that property is taken. That property is taken at 100% of whatever the value is as you take it. And it is gonna be double taxed. Whatever the corporate income tax rate is, again, sticking with that 21%, and your personal rate. I'm using 22% here as the example. So that $500,000 will be taxed in total at about 43%. That is huge, especially in comparison to other types of corporations. And this is why it's not very common for small businesses to file just a plain 1120. That's why many of them will elect to go with an 1120S because of this. Now, one benefit that does exist is if a shareholder chooses to pass along property physical property, um, real estate or anything like that to a company and they have a controlling interest. That means at least 80% of ownership of the company or 80% interest in the company, then the corporation will not result or will not see any income, any taxes on that. And anyone else, any other shareholders, even if they don't have that 80% interest that also invested that same tax year that property, they will also not incur anything there. So that is a benefit that exists. Now, as far as penalties and filing, just like every other entity type, corporations need to file in a timely manner. Most of the time that will be the 15th day of the third month or March 15th. If you do not file on time, we've talked about the other entities and kind of how there's a flat fee. Corporations don't have a flat fee because they physically pay taxes. So since they physically pay taxes, their penalty is 5% of whatever taxes are owed. So if you owe no taxes, then it's not that big of a deal. But if you owe $100,000 in taxes, it's 5% per month on that $100,000. So $5,000 a month that you're getting hit on that. So it could be a bigger penalty there. So definitely something to keep in mind there when looking at an 1120 and filing. Do make sure you file an extension if you can't file in a timely manner. That's always acceptable. Don't hesitate to do that. But that's what we have to look out for with a S corp, excuse me, with a C corporation or with a form 1120. So definitely something to keep in mind. If you need help or if you have questions or if you'd like to work with us to help you file these returns since we specialize in doing business returns, we're happy to talk with you on that. Please feel free to give us a call, email us, send us a letter, whatever. We're happy to work with you there. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day.